Hi, I'm Bran, and I love werewolf Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I despise werewolf Christmas movies. I'm Alonzo, and I'm sorry, I was here for the werewolf bar mitzvah, and this <laughs> is the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's this podcast. Bring Dan and friends host this podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Hi, everybody. Happy July. Oh. We finally made it Where to July. Days, Bran. <laughs> yeah? What's yes. going on? We actually are in June, ah. if you can believe it. Yes. It's great yes. to be here today. I, you didn't want to acknowledge Memorial Day. No. You I hate skipped it all together. You, you skipped Pride Month altogether because you, you yes. hate LGBTQ plus people. So, and uh, weddings, it, apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, great job, Bran, all the way around. Really classy on your part. I, I have I have a, uh, a, a a chat group on my phone that for some reason every year it's a competition to see who can be the first person to post uh, when it when it becomes June. Uh, the, do you know the print song sign of the times? Yes. Can't say that I do. Really? Okay. Well, anyway, the, the, there's there's a line about like uh, how his his cousin. Uh, smoked reefer in May or something, and like now he's on horse. It's June, and so it's June is because like the thing in our uh, chat group that so to, to mark the passage. It's sort of our version of the um, Justin Timberlake. It's gonna be May. Right. I love meme, it. You know? I love it. There you go. That's it's nice. Prince. It's gonna be June. No, I'm yeah, thrilled that it's June. 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 I love June. There's no one that loves June more than me. All right. I do want it yeah. on the record. That doesn't make it sound um, better. <laughs> We're talking about June Havoc, June you know, Many are saying I love June more than anyone's ever loved no June. No one loves June more than me. <laughs> uh, I, I thought about changing my name to June. That's how much I love it. That's right. Yeah. June Gray. Uh, really excited. Today we're talking about Werewolf Santa. Can werewolf I you, Santa. Can I call you June Bug? Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, werewolf Santa is what we're talking about today and why drag it out any longer. It originally premiered on uh, August 25th. Christmas Eve car orgy. Let's Tw- go. 2023 <laughs> uh, at Fright Fest London. This movie uh, premiered at Fright Fest London. How about and that? And it was a fright. It was. Yeah, it was. A- was a fright um and it went a little something like this uh we're dropped into the videos of a youtuber named lucy her channel is called monster hunters and uh she's not good at it she does not find uh monsters and uh it's she just kind of sits there and talks about how there's not monsters that is until christmas eve of 2018 suddenly it cuts to a (laughs) It cuts to a storybook and illustrations, and we hear the entire story, Twas the Night Before Christmas, with the illustrations. And I don't know why um, it it happens, but it's the entire story, and the illustrations are, like, weird, because I think the guy gets high with Santa. I'm not entirely sure. A little puff, puff, pass situation with Santa Claus. And it all ends with, you know it, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Until it all went, uh, there's some explicits there, but crazy is what they're trying to say. Yes. They tell the whole story just to let us know, and then it all went crazy. Here's that story of it going crazy. So Santa's puff puff passed, as you know. So back to 2018, Lucy and Dustin are driving home for Christmas, and Dustin is filming everything for better or worse, mainly for worse Uh, especially when they get to her mom's house it is a mess they all they can't handle this anymore so they go outside to uh to smoke a little something and as they're talking this guy runs out of the woods all bloody and collapses he has a, a big claw gash on the top of his head they go into the woods and they to see if they can see anything she's a monster hunter yep yeah, and she so a, she goes into the woods to see if she can see anything, and they don't find anything. But they keep hanging out in the woods as you do, and they stumble upon Santa taking a wee. It's taking a wee. I'm British, as they say. Taking a wee. Um, just then, they see something tackle Santa, and then start attacking him. This thing then scurries off. They go to check on Santa. His intestines are out, hanging out of his stomach. And he says that he wants to try to stand up. And when he does, 
he says in a scary voice, no pain at all. That's their cue. They run off, realizing that Santa is now Werewolf Santa. Santa. We Thank you. Merry Christmas. Uh, they, they, did, <laughs> they decide that they want to try to stop him. What? When, when they see him, <laughs> when they see him about to go into someone's house, they go inside to record him coming down the chimney. They catch it on video and then they run off. They do nothing about it. Uh, they decide that they need to stop the werewolf. So while they're out and about, they come across a group of folks <laughs> doing the dirty on top of a car. Christmas Eve car orgy. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> uh, don't worry, though. Werewolf Santa is not about that life. And he goes and he takes them all out. Um, and um, Christmas Eve car orgy. Thank you. It takes longer than you would expect, but they eventually uh, track uh, track them down and uh, they shoot them. Uh, they shoot them, but not before Santa takes a bite out of her dad. Yeah. Her dad's a part of this story as well, um, and Dad convinces we her teach her how to use a gun. That's right. Uh, dad convinces her to shoot him. Uh, and kill him because he's turning into a werewolf. You can tell by his hands, hand, the singular. glove, yeah. the glove he's wearing to showcase werewolf. <laughs> um, after that, Santa then pops back up, and he's good to go. He's back to normal. No, like suits pristine, no problem. They save the day, yay! Um, the movie ends with friends hanging out again. I believe next Christmas, and they end up seeing Santa get abducted by aliens. And that, my friends, was Werewolf Santa. We did it, <laughs> Lonzo. It seems like you, you're still scared. Seems like it. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's ter- terrified, but only in a in an aesthetic way. Right. You would think if you listen to June Bug synopsis, you'd think that it had, he had left out just so much pages and pages, but he did not. In fact, the movie is only an hour and 10 minutes. So there's that. Uh, Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll uh, break this movie down uh, here on Take the the Hallmark. Hallmark. Welcome back, everybody. We are going to analyze Werewolf Santa in a way that I'm going to go out on a limb and say no one else... (laughs) in the world has if you want to hear <laughs> analysis on this movie we are your exclusive <laughs> that's right access this is it this episode is going to be near the runtime of the film yeah that's right um let's break this movie down we're going to start with the hot take as we're share exactly how we felt about this movie alonzo How's your life changed since watching Werewolf Santa? What you think? Christmas Eve car orgy. Let's go. <laughs> you keep referring to this as a movie. <laughs> and I'm not sure that it is one. Uh, it is, like you said, 70 minutes, and that's including the entire uh, 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 recitation of Twas the Night Before Christmas by Joe Bob Briggs. Um <laughs> Yeah, this just feels like uh, a lark, <laughs> like just like somebody one afternoon and their phone and they thought, well, this will be funny. Um, and it's, it, uh, I, I don't know even what to say about this thing. It, it is it is hot nothing. Uh, there, there, there's no, there's no structure to it. There's no, uh, um uh, 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 it 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 I, I, words fail me. Really, this is just this is a non-entity of a film. Um, yes, it's not good. Um, I I do think that there was <laughs> there was an attempt. There was oh an attempt God. to do something. Um, like you know they rented out a snow machine. Uh, and had it going occasionally and. There were some the interesting uh, light choices, and it is. I'm trying, man. It is not good. It uh, makes no sense. the The first five minutes of this movie, uh, you will, you will not, you won't last. You won't last. Uh, 
we would have turned it off if we could have. <laughs> um, it was weird and not in a fun way. I, like I don't, I, I like I, I don't mind weird. I don't mind, you know, like bad horror. Like I can deal with it. But this was not fun, weird, and it was not good horror or bad horror. It was ju- it was not horror. So uh, uh, it was uh, a group of pals that got together. Uh, with their iPhone and said, let's give this a whirl. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah. And that, that, uh, that snow machine is a snow machine the way this movie is a movie. Yeah, yeah. Suds, sure. yeah. Suds, Suds machine. Yeah. I think well, I mean, if you've ever been around, like if you've ever seen one of those at like a thing, it is Suds. Like it is, yes. it is, that is yeah. what it is. So you they could, the like, to, to that point, like they could have just done digital snow and may, should they have? Yes. Uh, but I mean, they, I, look, I, I've seen one of those babies in action, like at Disneyland or whatever. And if the snow comes out the way it does in this movie, then you, you reset it. Yeah. You reset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there were there was an attempt, I guess. Uh, Dan, yeah. For those of you who are regular listeners uh, to the podcast, those of you who aren't just jumping in for Werewolf Santa because you needed to hear our thoughts, uh, I am one uh, to hyperbole. I guess I'm one for hyperbole. I I, I tend to exaggerate from time to time. Um, this is my least favorite thing I've ever watched for this podcast. <laughs> Without question. Um, and I can't believe a movie called Werewolf Santa is the thing that I've enjoyed the least. Why? Well, what really wasn't mentioned specifically in the synopsis, although you did say it, is this is a found footage movie. Oh, uh, yeah. So the whole movie is shaky cam. So one, if you're going to do that and you're not Blair Witch or something, you, you really have to... It's harder to do that. It's not easier to do that. It's harder to do that. No care is given to that whatsoever. None. Um, It is virtually impossible to watch. Uh, It is so short, yet feels so, so very long. (laughs) It has no... I, I still am not sure what happened. I just know that if I was supposed to do this for my job, I couldn't do it. This is not... It's not a movie. I, I also am not a huge partaker in rec- recreational drugs, but I can imagine that those making this film were, and, and I can also imagine that on the it, job that it, yes, if if this may be the reason it, to 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 try it out. I just don't like. Does it get better if you if you just go on a full acid trip? I don't know. But this movie is not interesting enough to be experimental, and it's not good enough to be called a movie. It's just, I'm going to give them a lot of credit. It's 58 minutes of footage packaged in a 75-minute movie about nothing. Yes. Um, it, was, it was awful. It was awful in a way that made me feel bad about what I'd said about other movies. Uh, it was just terrible. And I wish I, I was more lighthearted about it, but I but I'm not. But uh, kids don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. No. And, and the movie is also just like we. I said it last year, last week. Don't watch it. But it's like, it's it's crass for no reason at times. Like it, 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 it none of the like crassness makes any sense. And it's just like sometimes they say something, and it's like why yes, this Christmas why? Eve car orgy, which we'll talk about in the way what. <laughs> Had no reason to exist. No zero logical explanation. Especially as to since why it's it snowing outside. I don't know yes. if you've heard. Yeah, it's snowing outside. What better time? Uh, let's get to all the feels, <laughs> Alonzo. So many feels. <sighs> okay, here's what I got. I had Joe Bob Briggs feels. Um, <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs in a cartoon version comes out and reads so tonight. Who is Christmas. Joe Bob and- Briggs? Okay, well, Joe Bob Briggs is uh, a, a creation of a writer named John Bloom, who I have met a few times over the years. He went to Vanderbilt. He was a Grantland Rice scholar. He was a sports writer. Wound up going to Dallas, created this persona of Joe Bob Briggs, who was the guy who reviewed drive-in movies. So he would review like like kung fu movies and like crappy horror movies and that kind of thing. And he's now kind of he's now kind of like the white dude Elvira, like in that he will sort of host dumb weird you know like grindhouse movies on shutter in various places 
And uh, so, yeah, they don't introduce him. If you don't know who he is, they don't explain I thought to you, that the creators of this movie made up Joe Bob Briggs. No, no, they no. Were just super duper high. I no. was <laughs> so confused by this. Joe he's Bob Briggs a, introduces Werewolf Santa. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, he's been around for decades. And, and, and John Bloom has been very kind to me over the years. Like, you know, early on, he took me out to lunch to talk about, like, how journalism works and that my first year doing the film festival in Dallas, Joe Bob came and like hosted our midnight movie series. So like, it was nice to see him, you know, cause I, I have warm feelings toward him. Not that the movie explains him to people who don't already know who he is. Uh, and then that part ends and then we're stuck with the movie and, uh, there were no more fields. Do you know like why he would have said yes to that? Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know if they, if, if I, I don't know, I think probably he had like a contractual number of movies he had to introduce and they just like, okay, this we can get this one. <laughs> it, kind of. It ain't Casablanca, I, I, but it, it can be it either. <laughs> it, it's technically a movie. Uh, I yeah. I don't know Briggs is Texan because he's in Texas. That's all. He, got, yeah. No, so. no, that is totally okay. Texan is, is yeah. the, how the character <laughs> works. And like, it's funny when I, I, I did an interview with him once before I met him and, they asked me, now, do you want to talk to John or to Joe Bob? Because apparently he doesn't like to switch in the middle. <laughs> so I was like, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll talk to John and, and that'll be fine. It's like, do you want to talk to Bran or do you want to talk to June Bob? Because that's a whole other thing. Right. And I get that. Are there people, are there such uh, Joe Bob fans that would watch this movie just for Joe Bob? Uh, presumably. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he is, he has like a sort of branded line of things that he hosts on like shutter or wherever. So, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, if, if there's more like this, then that maybe they're going to get a little pickier about which ones they invest in. But, uh, yeah, the, he is, he is a brand in this world. Sure. Give me Alonzo's. Yeah, I'll take Alonzo's as well. <laughs> All right, great. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> to Joe Bob Briggs. To Joe Being Bob. a real person. And we love him. Or at least a character made up by a real That's person. Right. Whatever. <laughs> That's right. Shout out to Joe Bob. If you wanna, Bloom, shout out. If you want to introduce our show every week, let us know. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back in uh, just a second with the way one and the what the hallmark here on. Take, take the, the hallmark. hallmark. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking about Werewolf Santa. This movie's airtight. Airtight? Best part about this movie is the poster, which has looks nothing like the movie <laughs> at yeah. all. Nothing. And can you blame them? Yeah, fair. Let's, uh, let's get to the Wait What's. Uh, Alonzo, anything in this movie make you go Wait What? Oh, golly. Let's see. Well, I, first of all, just as a larger sort of observation, there is this interesting like Christmas horror kind of overlap. You know, Ron Oliver comes from the world of horror and winds up doing Christmas. You know, Tibor Takash has done a lot of Hallmark movies, but he made that movie The Gate. You know, Michael Verratti. There's a lot of people who, who, who you know, straddle those two genres and they they have a lot in common in terms of like you know you have to deliver what the audience wants and you have to do it on a budget you know and and so i can see how those things go hand in hand and there are certainly great christmas themed horror movies over the years your gremlins your black christmases whatnot but this thing <laughs> is neither yeah. <laughs> it's not scary. It's barely a Christmas movie. Um, and it's just, uh, like I said, is it even a movie? I don't even know. Uh, you've got some very strong sister action happening between the ostensible mother and daughter in this movie. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In terms of like their relative years of birth, like they do not seem like they are of different generations. That, that's right. just a weird, weird choice. Um, uh, I wrote down school play makeup. <laughs> like that the level of makeup in this movie is like literally you know okay you're gonna play the grandfather in this i'm gonna draw some lines on your face and throw some talcum powder in your hair uh the aforementioned snow machine i mean that is a dishwashing liquid commercial what we get just oh these big gosh. chunks of like scrubbing bubbles here it's not even remotely trying to wing it and again was there a second take on anything apparently not i guess somehow that was going to violate the whole found footage thing and then, as though this movie weren't generally cruddy-looking enough, you get these 
intertitles <laughs> that look like the the thing the, the 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 one that comes free with your computer where if you don't buy any other typefaces um yeah it's just this is if there if this movie is consistent in any way it is it is in its shoddiness mm. um put that on the dvd box that's right that's right <laughs> So they're at towards the beginning of this movie, they're driving down the road and they're listening to Christmas music. And if you listen closely enough, it sounds like they are, are playing jingle bells by Bing Crosby and the Andrew sisters. And I don't believe they got the proper rights to that song. There's no I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is a, uh, ask forgiveness and not permission situation <laughs> with the Bing Crosby estate. They're all sitting around storyboarding. This, you, know, you think we yeah. can just use Bing and ask forgiveness? Yeah, yeah, like yeah let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, when they first see the 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 person uh, come out of the woods and fall down, they go and look at him, and uh, she says that that this person has so much blood, but not in a convincing way. She says it like. So much blood. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Do you see that much blood all the time? Because you seem very not even remotely shaken by no. the amount of blood that you are seeing. There's so, so much There's so much blood there. Yay for me. I love it when it happens. Um, Santa. Were you Mario? Uh, <laughs> Yay for me. <laughs> Yay for me. Um, Santa. Time. <laughs> let's talk about Santa really quick. Um, oh, yeah. Santa. His sleigh is cardboard. It's cardboard, and I'm not. It's, I'm not. It's not like. I'm not saying it's like cardboard. No, no, no. no. This sleigh. Cardboard. This sleigh is literally made out of cardboard. Um. Mm. So that's fun. Um. I and and the 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 guts the intestines were just like oh really weird. Like you mentioned while we were watching it that you yeah, go ahead. Go no, you you say. It. Well, I got I got you go ahead because that was my last one. First of all, this movie has one set of fake intestines, and they are using the heck out of it. That's first of all. Yeah, it's I'm not giving saying, the church Halloween haunted house. I, I cannot tell you. Yeah, Judgment House. Yeah, say it right, Alonzo. It's Judgment House. This is the no, scene. I, I, where you, I, 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 I grew up papist, so oh, you know we okay. had a legit haunted house. We didn't have uh, to oh, do the Hell House thing. House. No, 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 Hate no, no, that no, for no. you. Actually, it was probably better. Uh <laughs> They, I'm not saying all intestines look alike or don't. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they have one set of intestines, and everyone who's dead has it on top of them. And there is one character who has his intestines on top of him, and he's still wearing a T-shirt on underneath him. <laughs> so you can see that the shirt is still on under his intestines. And at the wrap party, they grilled those intestines That's right. yeah, and yeah, served yeah. them with a nice mash. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, listen, I don't. If you're if you got kids, once again, maybe not the episode for you. Don't watch the movie, but maybe <laughs> oh, maybe we're sit, too late for sit that. A few plays <laughs> out here for the the children. Um, why is everyone having sex on this car? Uh, I like I said orgy. It's not like there's one couple having sex on the roof of the car and there's one couple having sex on the trunk of the car we don't know if they know the each boot, other we don't boot, know the backstory you. here we don't we don't know yeah we don't they know. may have seen them on the yes, roof and go we, that looks fun we just know that two couples both decided in a sea of forests that they're going to both have sex on top of the same car all right, let me try and work out what the movie contextualizes this as. So okay. the dad is like the local constable or policeman or whatever. Yeah. Yes. And he talks about people are dogging in the woods. And everyone's like, well, what is that? And apparently it's like they they get some pleasure out of public uh, coupling in this forest on a car and like okay the car is where that's I'm, the that, joke that's the sticking mark? point for me no pun intended the car is the problem it is oh, you public okay you get some sort of like christmas eve public sex all right get it i get it i understand but they, they both have to be next to each other on a car i that was the part that i was like 
Listen, man, whatever works for you. But yeah. I uh, well, it's December in England, but that's a whole other. Yeah, the, here's the, is it snowing or is it not snowing? <laughs> Hoods and trunks of cars are notoriously like comfortable. Uh, it is. It is a move and erotic. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Maybe new, let's move it into the car actually, for tonight it's since it's new, snowing. It's let's move it new, in. It's a new way to look at the phrase "hands on a hard body." <laughs> um, <laughs> is what it is. Uh, I had a new appreciation for Cronenberg's crash. Yeah, I'll say there that it is. Much. Of course. Yes. 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 Yeah. The Academy Award Best Picture winner. No, I know. I know. I know. Uh, it's just a joke. Um, so yeah, that's going on. They're using the heck out of a, a suds machine. I've never yeah. seen. They're not even trying. I know we've said it. They're not even trying. There are just soap suds everywhere. Yeah. Why, there why is, do it? There is a wide shot where you see the rest of the area and then the one spot where snow is falling. <laughs> and so it's like there's no snow in 75% of the frame. <laughs> and it's landing on people in clumps, yeah, like in their it's hair. It's, yeah. oh. uh, I also saw somebody in the chat say car hoods are warm when you shut them off. You're right. They're on the roof of the car. Yeah. Ch- yeah. Ch- and, 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 they're not and the on the hood of the car. Where there's no, the no motor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, a, it's an abandoned car. So super duper. Yeah, them. but you heathens in the uh, chat, you keep defending the yeah, the, right, the, right. the, yeah, the yeah. car sex folks. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a move there. Hey, if you're going to have sex right. in a car, that's where you Let's hear them out. Let's hear them out, the guys. Yeah, if, if the car still worked, they'd have sex in the car where there's climate control. <laughs> it's an abandoned and, car. And radio. Yeah. Um, there were, I do have one wait what that involves the actual plot of this movie. The dad in this movie tells his daughter... The instructions of how to fire a gun in three different scenes. Now, <laughs> I, we've already said this. This movie, 72 minutes, maybe, with credits. For, for over The Night Before Christmas is a long freaking book. They read the whole thing. They don't read the, the parts that you hear in, like, no. the Santa Claus, where then Tim Allen's like, blah, 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 blah. they don't do that. They read the whole thing. So take five minutes out off the top right there. In the rest of the runtime of this film, there are three scenes where the dad's like, don't forget about the safety, and then you you load the... It is a gun. It is it is not, you know, calculus-based physics. Like, this guy is explaining to a grown woman how to just fire a gun in three different scenes. And I just... Did they not have anything else to say? It, it is beyond me how that happened. So those are those are my white ones. Uh, it's time for uh, where where wolf. I don't know. Uh, it's for where we. Shutter it's their wolf. Their castle. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, we've all got a good ideas here, it's, but it's it's uh, what the hallmarks. This is, the, the Shutter said no to this. Like it's not even <laughs> on <Yeah>. Shutter. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's uh, where we wonder what could have been. Maybe have because any any clarity <laughs> to the questions that we have, Alonzo. What are you still wondering about? I, I just have to say, as I'm watching like this, you know, uh, college dropout failed YouTube host, her <laughs> nerdy childhood best friend, and her bickering parents making their way through the woods. All I could think was. Can we take a moment to appreciate how great Shaun of the Dead is? Oh my gosh, it's so great. <laughs> it's so great. Shaun of the Dead and is a great is, movie. One of my all-time this, favorites. Yeah, and th- this movie is, cannot uh, uh, get anywhere close, but it's trying and you know and and, and I just I, I was immediately thought about, oh, what would I what would I rather be watching that this movie's kind of reminding me of? Oh, yeah, Shaun of the Dead. And you know what? Their their Christmas Eve car sex orgy was – it's so it's so classy, yeah. you know? It's, it's, and germane to the plot, yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classy. It's classy. Yeah. When, they are, when they are playing uh, Queen in the bar and they're hitting in rhythm, the zombie in rhythm <laughs> to yes. – oh my, oh, my goodness. Just an all, all-timer. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm. So, Brian, you've seen Shaun of the Dead, of course. I have. Really? Yeah, I have. You don't, you're not a, you're not a fan? It's fine, yeah. Oh, yeah. how dare you. But I was also uh, like a freshman in high school maybe okay. when I saw it, so I, I, I didn't uh, appreciate it oh. as much as maybe I should have. Um, so th- this woman in this movie is a YouTuber, and, and, and you got to do a lot of work to figure that out. 
Um, because for some reason in the version that we watched, they do oh, the yeah. thing. They, so they do the thing where she's talking. And then if you've ever watched a YouTube video, lots of times it'll pop up and be like, subscribe. And it'll have the little YouTube logo and the subscribe button and the thing. Um, for some reason they, it's blurred out, uh, when yeah. you watch this on mm-hmm. demand. And so what that means i'm assuming is that they didn't ha- like there's something about that pop up that they didn't have the rights to yeah, that's why most people put make it. fake names like instead of youtube it would be like ctv or something yeah, yeah. so they yeah. didn't do that the, Being in the Andrew sisters, sure, but they're not going to mess with right. Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you no. don't you don't mess with Google. The my bigger takeaway here is the fact that they had to blur it shows me that somebody lost the file to be act- <laughs> to be able to edit the movie where they could just take it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they did Nothing is they I can do. put the finished product back in an editing software <laughs> and just said blur it out. I that's my that's listen, I'm making some assumptions here, but we may based, be giving them more credit than they deserve. Who based, knows? <laughs> based on what I know, that would be the only explanation I could think of of why it happened. Uh but I would love to know the real story behind why this is blurred out when you watch it anywhere. Dano? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also think somewhere along the way in this sixty five minute masterpiece that the filmmakers conflated w- werewolves and zombies. Um because in the movie, if you get bitten by a werewolf, you become a werewolf, which I, I guess. But do you? But then the person that like, was bitten right. goes back to being normal. No, there's a whole complicated thing about like how who the alpha is, basically. So is that, why, is that why Santa can go back to normal? But Yes, because okay. they kill the alpha who turns out to be the dad, which means that the dad is training the daughter the entire movie to kill him because he knows that the only way to fix this is to have him How be did killed. he become the alpha? Uh, it's explained somewhere in there, but it all went by very quickly. Man, I'm learning stuff new every day. I mean, I just, well, I yeah, I, that's all I got. I, I, I don't. Yeah, cool. No, I think cool. I think you've got a pretty but, good handle but, on it. But still, the idea of getting bit by a werewolf makes you become a werewolf. Is that part of like werewolf lore? Well, usually what happens is if you get bit by a werewolf, then the next time there's a full moon, you become a werewolf. Yeah, the full moon thing. Exactly. This is like a Walking Dead situation where you get a little bit. bit and it's yeah, like, I'm gonna... it's just infectious. Yeah. yeah. But then you can still revert back as long as you weren't the alpha. <laughs> right. Okay. Or if the gal gets killed, I yeah. now, guys, next week. You okay. <laughs> now I just I I was hoping it was gonna get better, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Jude, um, you look a little distressed. Next week we're wa- <laughs> next next week we're watching a movie called Santa's Second Wife. Okay. <laughs> now Santa's Second Wife was created by Movie Central. And the mm, the only like- the <laughs> only way to watch it is on Movie Central's YouTube page. They have lots of movies. They have lots of movies. <laughs> it's called Santa's Second Wife. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Oh, it's called Santa's Second Wife. But I, I, you had to do that title though, right? Santa's Second Wife. Well, one we these, might get another car these, scene. We might get another car scene. One of these days, I'm going to be angry enough to just pick all the movies. We're myself. almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> we're almost to July, and then we'll start having fun. Yeah. We're, we're, we're okay. almost done. Okay. We're almost done. Here we go. Uh, we'll be back next week with that. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with another one. Until then, maybe first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo Philo, go to philo.tv slash dth. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi, but here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day.